ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome back Kim Shalar. Kim, um, you're the first person in the last 12 months that's who's come back for the second time. Mm. And because, and the reason for that is, is so many people loved you. So okay. many people loved your energy, your, your message, and what they said was you spoke from the heart. And I'm not kidding you, we got twice as much engagement from our podcast than anybody else wow. before. I didn't know that. Yeah, you are. Maybe because you were the second one I ever interviewed, but anyway. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but no, seriously, so thank you so much for coming back. Thank and, you. And um, you went well last time we spoke, right? What yeah, was wrong? I just had a migraine. I woke up in the morning and it was like, I just couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, that, that usually happens when, um, I wouldn't say a migraine, but usually when I go into those highly meditative states and I'm like, okay, today I'm going to download something. The next day is a complete uh, download happening, and I just can't get up. Yeah. So, so what do you, you lie down with closed curtains and drink loads of water? No, and I just sleep. Yeah. Remember the last time I told you, I go in comas. Yeah. <laughs> cancel, cancel, but I super, I, I'm just out. I, I think I, I woke up in the evening and messaged today that, you know, hello, I'm back to being a human now. So. Sure. Well, we missed you. I know. But I'm sure that was, this one's going to be better. Of course it is. Uh, I suffer from vertigo, which is like a nightmare. Yeah. You know what that is when yeah, the whole yeah. room revolves. The whole room is like even if I close my eyes, the whole damn thing revolves. I only started having it about five years ago, and it was I was on holiday. Can you, on a four-day trip to New York, three days I had vertigo. Ouch. Yeah, so it was maybe too much salt, lack of water. I don't know what it was, but I, it was horrible, and I've had it ever since. Anyway. Really. Mm. Used to be migraine, now I've got mm. vertigo. I'm just like upscaling as I get older. <laughs> it just gets worse. I'm not going to say anything. I'll doom it. Just cancel, cancel. Last, cancel. last time we spoke, yep. we touched on male and female energy. Are you happy to go there? Because we said we'll come back, we'll get you yep. back to talk about male and female energy. Um, recently, I went to a course in India and I didn't. These are the things that the listeners may know, and obviously you know, that we're all born female. We're all in the womb, we're all female, right? And we just happen to either stay female or grow male genitals, right? So there's a huge female energy within all, uh, all of us. Yep. And I believe there's male energy in females, correct? Absolutely. So could you educate me what the hell all that means? <laughs> because it was actually, through a meditation process in India, I really tapped into my female energy, and it was amazing. Isn't it? It was amazing. You know, Dariush, there, there are so many female bodies that have shut off their female energy. Um, so if you go like years back, and this is information that I've learned from my teachers or read about, the, the entire uh, society, the entire culture was very female dominated. And obviously, you know, back then the, uh, the people that would give advice, the people that would kind of, you know, take the call with the female energy. But, you know, slowly and steadily people woke up and said, no, that's not cool. Let's make it completely male dominated. And is this, then to is this worldwide or in certain countries? Worldwide. worldwide. It's, it's energy, right? It's worldwide. Even today when we look at it, if I look at uh, situations in India where it comes to the imbalance of energy, aspects of it are across the world. You know, you would still have the same uh, things propping up in relationships, uh, spousal relationships across the globe. Can you, can you, before we go too deep, for people like not very smart like me, how does that affect? How do I know I have a male female issue going on in my relationship or with me? What are the signs? Uh, there are so many signs. Uh, so, so what happens, I'm going to have to take you a little bit back, right? We are a being, okay? Each and every person is a being before your physical body. Your being it kind of consists of four elements. It's your physical body, it's your emotional body, your mental body, and your energy body. In your energy body, everything begins at the energy body. And then when you don't pay attention, it's you know messaging you through your mental body, your emotional body, telling you how you feel about things. And then when you don't listen, it finally gives you your final message through your physical body. So for instance, uh, your left side is, is 
primarily what your female energy is. Your right side is your male energy. So suddenly you'll start noticing that, oh, I have, you know, I got a sciatica and my left side seems jammed or my foot is heavy on the left side or, uh, you know, you're getting this spasm in your arm. That's your left side yelling out for a balance in your in your feminine energy and so many people feel it you know they'll, they'll come and say that i write with my right hand i'm working with my right hand but why is my left arm aching because your body is trying to tell you and it's told you in so many different ways that hello we're in imbalance so that is one of the physical uh, you know signs that something is going off and you start feeling certain pains in your left and and there is something that when i realized this i actually went and looked into Google, that's the smartest way to generally find an answer. And see, a number of people that get strokes, which side are they getting a stroke? Left. Left side. And I was like, shit, nobody's spoken about this. Sorry, we'll have to cut that off. I have to blind all the time, so then we're not going to cut it Yeah. Off. And I was like, hasn't, haven't we figured this out yet? You know, so. The, the energy is about male and female already. And in, in, in anything that you look in spirituality or you look in yoga is all about balance. You know, your chakra system is all about balance. We're not saying go extreme over here or go extreme onto this end. It's just about being in balance all the time. So when a person is balanced in the female and male energy, you've experienced it, everything changes. The way you communicate change, the way you understand things change. The way uh, you know you begin to attract people, situations, it completely changes. May I go back a little bit more? Yeah. What the hell is male female energy, right? Hmm. So I'm, I'm a guy who goes to the office, and I'm a dad, and go home to my kids and wife, and wake up and then we go to the office. What the, who's doing what, which is male, which is female? How do I recognize it through my behavior, thought, pro could you just help me a little bit? So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say a male dominant energy is creating a vision board. What would he put on the board as male dominant energy? He would write, you know, car, house, uh, family vacations, all of that. A female dominant energy would talk about spending time with my family, just emotions and feelings. Uh, yes. It, female energy would talk more about a desire-based goal and the male energy would talk about, you know, the manifestation of how it looks. So when you merge that, now imagine you merged your goals and say, okay, what is it that I really desire to spend time with my family? Where would we spend the best time? You know, then you decide. It's amazing because I've, I've been through my two marriages, right? Um, so if I say to my future wife uh, and I say I booked a holiday and the wife goes yeah but with this and with that and that but if I say I booked a holiday so we can spend more quality time together mm. then she gets it exactly and she welcomes it oh, yeah that's where I made a mistake so so I used to say look why are you so unhappy I, I booked a holiday I'm thinking yeah. about us we're gonna go on holiday I've got you this car I'm doing this and the, the recipient wasn't that welcoming. Exactly, like, because mm. the, the feminine energy understands and filters information that comes through the emotional um, being, the mm. emotion being, mm. right? The masculine energy filters information and comes through the mental being. Wow. So they're thinking, okay, I'm... At, I think that I should give her a comfortable life, provide mm -hmm. her with comfort, do all of this, but you're missing out on presenting that. Wow. You know, sometimes you can get the most basic thing, but wrap it up so well that it makes a big difference. So in a relationship, if I'm aware of my spouse's female energy and communicate with her on her level, we can have a better understanding. I think more of it is to, to balance your own uh -huh. energy. That was my next question. Yeah, because How when do you I do it? that, uh -huh. you automatically connect with her energy. Now, here's, here, here's the fun part of it, you know. Uh, a lot of times we've been told that understand that aspect, and yes, we must. But you truly understand that aspect when, when you make it part of you. So she has a male energy and a female energy as well. 
one or the other is 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 prominent dominant or it's balanced so in the current stage what's happening that even women have shut off their feminine energy because we want to compete with the men is independence that is i want to be independent is that somebody saying i have a strong male energy uh no because you can be female crazy energy and female be in, energy uh-huh. independent. And be independent yeah and and trust me when uh when the female energy is is if a person has a dominant female energy and they kind of um, welcome the main as the male aspect energy the limits that they will reach is unbeatable because a female energy has has charisma has you know poise has elegance has all those little things that a guy has to really work hard for as in the male energy has to work hard for so if i'm a guy and i'm an alpha male right don't is this me show, show a bit of weakness if i tap into my female energy do i turn a bit like beta no. male no see that's that's the fun part of it because female energy is not about weakness it's not about perceived weakness and that's such a wonderful question and i know that that was to bring out this question it's it's more about understanding that female energy is is about kind of reading between the lines is about pulling out information understanding getting things done listening through yeah. yes massive skills through through listening through um through intent all of those things that we struggle with you know everybody male female everyone when we're talking about manifesting a life and getting things done is coming a lot from the so female energy. So alpha male can be even more alpha male and happier yeah. if it happens to the female. Energy. Absolutely. And big question how do you do that? Oh, but that was my next <laughs> question. <laughs> See, I read it. <laughs> you just start with basics every day. It's it, for everybody the female energy will will manifest differently. There's no, you know, um I mean there are things that you can do like for example the most easiest thing to do is to nurture something nurture a plant nurture your car <laughs> though it doesn't have life but it does have some level of energy nurture a person at work nurture someone at so home so say nurture a plant what do you do you sleep next to it no you you interact you sing with to it. it you talk to you it you could you could talk to it you could when you water it you have a conversation with it because trust me and trust me you're, you can when people say walls have years oh yes they do i swear i talk to my plants awesome i do Too good. and i'm thinking i'm mad no because no. they sense oh, the energy oh my little tree i be you yeah. you thirsty let me yeah, give you some yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that that brings out or not sure your your little pet it's so easy to have a pet and you know mm-hmm. show that love and have you noticed when you're nurturing someone like a baby a pet a plant something changes in the way we speak we can be walking around all boss like alpha like tonality and then change, suddenly so. you go then like hey baby mm-hmm. that's nurturing not because we got to speak like that but something within us changes oh. you know another way to to nurture that energy or to open that energy is to move in flow so you dance uh whichever dance that I know you like dance now, I wouldn't say you know head banging trance <laughs> yeah i i'm not sure it's more about um, a trance dance with a plant <laughs> you have to see hus- that <laughs> husband walks in like uh i think i'll come back in I'll about come an back hour later yeah. <laughs> then the question will be what kind of plant is that mm. so it's when you move should we just tell the to the audience not cactus plants <laughs> don't do don't do a donald yeah, trump no. like <laughs> let's drink uh, disinfectant yeah yeah what oh my does. goodness So when you move I mean when anyone moves and the move has flow into it that's again feminine energy so whether you know a lot of people do zumba today or you're doing a spanish dance because a lot of hip movement why hip movement because uh that's where your lower chakras are your security chakra mm-hmm. your creative chakra yeah. the the sacral chakra is is a is a predominant feminine Male but is that your one of your most powerful chakras? Yeah. I mean, all of them are powerful, but the, the mistake the that people do, yeah, chakra is the yes, most powerful. Um, 
the, the mistake that a lot of us do is we focus on the ones above here, from the heart and above. And it's amazing because it gives you clarity, it helps you love, it helps you forgive, but it's as good as saying that, you know, I'm gonna walk around with a plant or a tree that I'm holding in my hand. Where's the foundation? That's not gonna grow if, you know, you're, you're just working it's from- nothing supporting it. Yeah. So the three bottom chakras are so important because if that is properly grounded, rooted, everything else comes far more easier. So I wake up in the morning, what do I do? I talk to my plant, really nice. I'm not being funny, honestly. No, 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 go I, ahead. I give some love and affection to my plant. Do I meditate? What do I do? If you like meditating, so to, meditation. To tap into my chakras, what do I do? So there are several ways. One. Um, the idea is to let it come to you the way it comes. So for me, a, you know, a sitting meditation is very powerful for me. When I'm in the shower, it's like my my uh, my idea zone. I can just get all those ideas out there. For somebody else, it's driving, it's cooking. So find your zone, you know, where you're in flow, and then go into silence in that moment, or just go into you know what I call the alpha brain wave. So your alpha brain wave stage is when. Uh, your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere is aligned. So why is that important? Because if logically you have a question that, okay, I don't know how to get uh, more clients, or what do I need to put out, what do I need to stop doing? That question, when you're in alpha, it, it connects with your creative aspect and you're just getting answers. You're getting answers from, as a download, you're getting answers from your subconscious. How'd you get to alpha? Could you explain how you get Easy. to alpha? Easy. So three times in the day, you're anyways going into alpha. That's the time you wake up, where you're kind of drowsy, but you're still awake. Mostly right after a heavy meal, because then your body you know, kind yeah. of slows down, and right about when you're gonna sleep. So you just move into that zone. Now the idea is to stay in alpha with, uh, you know, with, by an organized alpha uh, moment. So it's very easy. You do a deep breathing, you can do the square breathing. I just did a session the other day with a company. Square breathing is, you take a breath for say five seconds, through you your hold nose, it. Through your nose. Yeah, through your nose. You hold it for five seconds. You breathe out for five seconds, and then you don't breathe for five seconds. So that's called the square breath, right? You do that for around five to ten times, and you're in alpha. Wow, so, so easy. That is so easy, and that's when you're, you know, you just realize that, oh, this is relaxation over me. A lot of people say, me. I can't meditate because I'm always thinking things. My I've got this traffic in my head. So many people say it. And, and I say to them, just thing. let it flow, right? Yeah. Let it flow. Don't fight the traffic, right? Everyone, I, I mean, I've personally felt because my dad used to say that I never had an answer to tell him what is it. But now I understand that the minute you go into silence, there's your body, your mind, your emotions. They're trying to tell you like a laundry list of things that you need to resolve. It's trying to tell you that hello, this is pending, and here's an open loop, and this, you know, here's your karmic loop, and this is this, and this is. It's not that it's not supposed to come. It's it, meant to be there. Yeah, it's, good. it's, it's reinforcing that hello, you've shut your eyes. Now, since you're giving me the attention, I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you what you need to go and complete, or what is it that you need to go and heal. When it's possible to for your for your mind to have a conversation with with your body, right? And what is that alpha? Is that an alpha stage? It's it's having a conversation every time. All the time. It's an alpha stage that. Okay, uh, let me take you. There are five predominant brain waves that we go, go through. Okay, there's gamma, which is you know there are those days that you get up and you're like zoop 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 zoop. You, you know, you, you're absorbing information, you're delivering something, and yeah, that's when had, you're functioning uh, at Gamma. We had one of those days yesterday, yeah. we were like multitasking, we were driving it, yeah, it was... So cool. that's a, a Gamma moment, right? Beta is what we're normally at. You're thinking, you're analyzing, you're problem solving, then goes into Alpha. Alpha is your, you know, it's just lounging. You're not sleepy, you're lounging. That's your daydream moment. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you're just sitting and ideas are coming in. And you can go through all out. five all day long. Yes. Right. Then comes Theta. Theta is where you you begin to, you know, your meditation begins. Theta is where a little bit of healing begins. Theta is where a lot of manifesting begins. And then there's Delta, 
which is your deep sleep, but that's where all your rejuvenation happens. That's where your mind and your subconscious is saying that, okay, we've read 10,000 books today. Uh, you know, Kim has said all these things. Now I've got to make new rules out of this stuff because I've given it as input. And it's beyond subconscious, isn't it? It's deeper. It's deeper. You know, there's something called super conscious. No. And even I didn't know it until recently. I mean, a little bit later recent <laughs> not as recent but when you tap into super conscious oh my god dear it's it's unbelievable because you start understanding like we were speaking you know before we went live about your walls do have ears because then you start getting messages from your room when you step out and you talk to i don't know the sun and the moon and the stars you get messages from them because in superconscious, you you kind of reconnect back to the fact that we're all beings and we're all beings of the same energy. Wow. Can you be in superconscious and walking around talking or you have to be in a meditational state? No, you can be walking around talking. How do you get there? How do you get to superconscious? You train yourself. So you train yourself to, obviously, the um, at least for me, I mean, I can talk about how it worked for me. So I started off with, you know, clearing my chakras, being in awareness, being conscious, and then tapping into that energy, consciously calling on that energy and say, okay, now I want to access more information. I want to access, you know, communicating with things. So it's a process, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't have to be a long process. It's the intent that matters mm -hmm. because the minute you tell your mind that I'm ready to know more and I'm ready to work in okay. in collaboration with you, it's going to jump in and say, hello, here are the 10 things you need to do. When people shut their eyes and say, I can't meditate, that's the assumption that you're supposed to go into silence the first day you yes. shut your eyes. Because your mind is so excited that it's giving you the list of things that you've kept pending. You know, we walk away from people, we walk away from situations, leaving it undone. So because it's undone, it's got kind of an open loop hanging over your head. And it never leaves you. Exactly. So when you shut your eyes and you say there's so much of information, yes, allow it to flow. But sometimes just sit and listen to it and see what's it telling you. Because that's meditation as well. Because then you know that, okay, why is this person's face popping up every time? Do you think like not enough people, if I hired a coach, do you think we should sit there and meditate for an hour and not talk? Because the answers are within us. The answers are within us, but well, we've got to learn to, mm. to, to silence the noise outside. And not everybody knows that. So the answers are within us, but then sometimes as as coach, Give you clarity. Yeah, you've got to be able to pull that out. And then some people uh, listen when they speak. Mm. You know, that you've you got to make people speak because then they'll give the sol solution themselves. Because you're making them, you know, kind of unraveling their but intelligence the from inside. the questions you ask, yeah. they'll start answering their own And questions. like we've noticed the last time that when we chat, you kind of end my sentences. Because again, there's this, um, there's this energy reading that's happening. So you just know what to ask. And sometimes before you finish your question, I'm already mm -hmm. answering that question because that's what happens. Amazing. So to, I was listening to you now and I think I'm having problems with my spouse in my relationship or personally Dari is here, this is reality. I can have a temper and certain things trigger and I don't like afterwards the, the outcome because it's draining for me, it's draining for the other person, it re re could have damaged the relationship and then I reflect and I think oh no I should apologize and it's, it's not a good process to go through. So how can you help me if you were my coach? to deal with that because I take ownership right this and I've been looking and thinking why is it because I'm tired I'm irritable irritated irritated yep. not irritable is that yeah irrit either off and um, I shouldn't I should not snap because mm -hmm. when you snap you could easily make your eyes I should hold back so how do, I, how do I deal with that through meditation through what do you suggest so um, just today I was thinking about a tagline I wanted to create and again, when I was in the shower, I got the idea that don't be emotional, but be the emotion. What does it mean? We've, we've heard everyone saying don't be emotional, but I'm asking you, be the emotion. Why? 
because when you said that you identified your triggers then you need to sit down with that trigger and say okay why let's break it down yes we've we've learned that it's good to apologize and we should because that it kind of stitches things for the time yeah, being. Yeah, but it shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah, right? but even if, if it did happen, it's fine. Okay. But when we stitch it and apologize, we're just apologizing for, for that event. Are we really going to the source? So to go to the source, you go back to the trigger and say, okay, you said this and it triggered me. Tired, maybe. But even if I'm tired, what it meant that because I'm tired, I snapped was because I didn't have the tolerance to or the, the tolerance to allow it to flow but it still means that that trigger has something to do with the past something that is unhealed something that I've got to really sit with and work on it so my advice would be sit with that emotion and understand what it means for you what it meant for you at some point in time that is unhealed that is thrown under the carpet what if what if thank you by the way what if the uh, behavior maybe could be protection mechanism because in the past some some triggers go back to my last 10 14 years of mistrust hurt pain so maybe my anger is to say right enough don't don't come close don't hurt so what if people have got patterns that are developed over a long period of time? How do you, when you're in emotion, help me. Okay, the beauty of patterns is I'm not just pretending this is somebody, this is me. No, no, I'm no, talking that, about, I have good. that. That's good, that's yeah. good, because I'm sure there's a lot that people will, so many people connect with that. Fortunately or unfortunately, God gives the same story to literally everybody. It's like, he's not too uh, creative there. <laughs> so patterns are, they just repeat until it's solved and every time they repeat they they come harder they come more in your face because it's like damn are you not gonna listen are you not understanding what's happening so the best way to break the pattern is again i'm going to take you back to the emotion now, now let me explain why the emotion uh there is a chart it's not developed by me it's been there for years it's called the vibration chart that every emotion has a frequency now in a day, we go through a range of emotions, but your base emotion is always almost the same. So for instance, you get up in the morning, you be happy because it's morning, I'm having one of my good days. You know, so many people say I'm having one of my good days, or I woke up on the right side of the bed. That means it's not your chosen emotion. The weather, something affected else. Affected you. Affected you, right? But or you allowed is, it to affect you. Yes. But what is your personal base emotion? Because that emotion, so for example, just yesterday I was writing about it, that um, we want to manifest. So when we're manifesting, we, we, we're hopeful, we're talking abundance, but in the back of your mind, your base emotion is doubt, is fear, scarcity, all of that, how are you going to manifest? Because your emotion is a frequency that frequency is kind of radiating out and saying get me stuff that matches my frequency so so when we're sitting in an emotion where it's it's mistrust or it's uh, you know i'm expecting something to go wrong that frequency goes out and it tracks exactly those same situations in your life so opposites don't attract not in the energy world I mean, they would attract in terms of you're talking about this, a male this energy. Chart, this chart. Yeah. Does it, like, for instance, if it's like this, does it show that it's anger? Does it show, it's, if I'm angry, you're angry, do we have the same vibrations? Not necessarily. Oh. Because your anger is, anger, in my opinion, is, is a defense mechanism. It's not a pure emotion. Oh. It's not, you know, one of those base emotions. It's, it's a result of, you know a displacement of energy it's a result of being quiet for so long and then you're like i've had it you know i'm gonna burst like the lava because when you had to sit on a daily basis and kind of clear out your emotions and go through your day with what all went on what 
people made you feel, how you made someone feel, or what you are sensing, and then you keep moving that aside. Anger is just like, okay, that's it enough. There's no more place. You know, I'm going to burst out. What are your base energies? Mine? People. Oh, do we all have the same base energies? No, we don't. Some people are still functioning from fear. Some people are functioning from, uh, you know, uh, submissiveness so everything is suppressed not submissiveness but it's been suppressed for years and years and years so that is why that can either come out as depression that can come out as anxiety that can come out as fear that can come out as anger addiction addiction hmm. so many things then you have people sitting with a lot of shame and guilt oh my god the number of times as as parents or you know parent our parents that generation or our teachers or the culture that put you through embarrassment shame on you you know <laughs> you have a daughter right? i have a daughter now is do you worry about your daughter getting older and meeting a normal human being or do you f- i fear for my kids no i, I think don't. this is there going to be a normal human being out there for them without all these issues that they're going to bring to that relationship. So they will the attract um, people that are, that are going to help them grow or they're going to teach them lessons. In Yes, as a parent. I those would, lessons could be painful. Right? Could be painful. So that is where, you know, the, uh, the importance of energy, where you know that you can't force something like physically onto them, but then you're playing your game <laughs> in the energetic world. You're putting, you know, protection over them. You're you're uh, gifting them the energy of, of wisdom, you're you know, gifting them the energy of clarity so they know and they can see through and they can just sense that, okay, this person is not good for me. I don't want to be friends with them because I can't tell her what to do and I'm pretty sure she's not going to listen at that time, maybe, maybe not, but I can definitely influence her, not influence her, but I can equip her with the energy protection. Would you say love is the most powerful energy? It 100% is. 100%. There is no way to change a situation without putting love into it. Could that be love for somebody outside your family? Yeah. Your staff, your this. Because I say I love you a lot, and I really mean it, actually. Yeah. But the recipient may not think love. Oh, oh. See, again, we in terms of conditioning we've we've limited love to to a relationship Mm -hmm. to to a set of people Mm -hmm. but love is not a relationship love is an energy when i say be the emotion you be love so when you are love you're not you know when you are love doesn't that make you vulnerable and fragile to being hurt no Love is, again, if I take you on the vibrational chart, it's Because people right listening may be thinking that. Yeah. If I'm living in love and, and I'm a, I could be just no walls, no protection walls, I could be hit. That, again, is a limiting belief of what we've thought for so many years, that love is like, you know, wear your heart on your sleeve and walk around and say, oh, come on, and, you know, I'm, I'm loving and all. No, love, love as being the emotion or love as an energy is the ability to look at things just as it is is the ability to look at yourself just as you are not as you know to be being able to um i wouldn't say vulnerable but being able to be honest of what your current self is and what your higher self image is so when when you function in that agendaless being you're not going to keep uh, displacing onto others you're not going to be projecting onto others so then it's very easy to, to walk into a room and you know say you're even going on you know the blind date thingy and you will be able because you're functioning at that level of love you'll be able to attract like because you will be able to uh, to Connect. sense it yeah, exactly. and you will be able to share it even though you, you know there's there's nothing beyond that so it's not that you know oh, I'm gonna, just going to have uh, love relationships so with, with the this, world. With this internet business and internet dating, can you still connect with people on the vibration? On yeah. Online? That's how, you know, energy healing is not limited to face-to-face. You can look at, I mean, I have so many friends and it's so funny that when they're dating, uh, they'll send me a picture and say, read his energy. And I'm like, 
you don't waste your time. <laughs> you say no to everyone. I know you. No. You're like, nobody's good enough. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. Uh, so, so you can do that. Because no, you've got to be so scared. Your picture could be everywhere today. <laughs> It, it's that simple when you start reading energy you know it's like um, so they say that your friends message you and say yeah me they message you and say okay and the poor bastard's paying the bill or something like this yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's listening, you know, he's, his energy is being scammed as well yeah, like as well as credit scammed. cards yeah his energy is scammed I wish I could wow. scam credit cards yeah <laughs> <laughs> so thank you thank you amazing again you and I can talk for hours and hours we've hours. gone a bit again? sidetracked no yep. no we've gone a bit side. we kind of like go back to male female yep so um, 100 people and you recognize their male female energy or lack of it or, or strengths of it what is the most common top three common issues that people can resolve if they dealt with their male female energy like marriages happiness addictions or from your experience um, fulfillment because when you have the biggest being fulfillment because when you feel that sense of uh, you know completeness I know completeness is not a word but it it really describes that you feel complete within yourself you're not depending on somebody to validate you you're not depending on someone to uh, to make you feel a certain way. It doesn't mean that you become, you know, all uh, isolated and say, okay, I'm fine and I'm enough. But it's more of saying that, you know, you're not seeking out relationships to complete you. Wow. So you're complete and then you present yourself in that and utmost somebody completeness. somebody can enhance you, right? Yes. So you're adding value to one another. You're wow. enjoying that, you know, complete... Uh, existence together and it's so much of fun because then you're like you didn't call me you didn't say good night I know I'm very animated <laughs> yeah. no honestly you know what honestly okay, help me here because that's interesting he didn't say good night my father died when he was in his sleep okay and um, I have an issue about going to sleep because mm -hmm. I never know if I'm gonna wake up in the morning because it happened to my father and my grandfather so it's really important to me that I always go in a good place to bed and I always say good night. Is that my male female energy or is it that value that I have? It's is that value. A, it's, it's not a bad thing. Not at all because you're, you're, you're closing, you know, you're kind of putting the full stop on that day and saying thank mm -hmm. you and saying good night and you know, kissing your family members before you go to bed. So you've put a full stop. I was in a relationship whereby I felt this lady was hurting me but not saying good night. I sat down at the beginning of a relationship and I explained how important it is to me and purposely she wouldn't say good night. Mm. Well, maybe it was not important for her. Mm, but obviously she didn't value the relationship, right? To, or she, if she did it, she would have done it for me. Mm. Do you see the confusion? So l let me take you through mm. maybe her perspective. Yeah. Maybe for her, and I'm just thinking out loud that she's somebody who doesn't decide to go to sleep. She's probably laying in bed, washing her phone, and then she just goes off to bed. So or for she her, she doesn't exhausted. connect. Yeah, exhausted. she doesn't connect with the I have to say good night and go to bed, but maybe I'm not going to bed yet. So what if we were in a relationship and I was in love with you and I knew it was really important to you? Because I'm a kind of person who makes sure if it's important to you, I'll do it for you. Yeah. And it, it'll not, I'm doing it as a service and it'll become my pleasure because. It makes my loved one happy. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but again, that's I, because... I want you to challenge me. That's because the person who is expecting that is asking the opposite party that this is a segment that's, that's, you know, that's my sweet spot or that's my pain spot. Come and fill it every night. Mm. Wow. You have to, nobody has to, but if you got to move beyond that, you have to sit with that pain spot and say, okay, baby, what do we do about this? Do you know what I used to do? Hmm. I used to lie there thinking, what a shame, because that other person doesn't really value moments. Yes, and I was thinking, why do I need to be in this relationship when we're not on the same wavelength? Yes, yep. if that person doesn't value the things that I value, why am I in it? Because again, at some level, you... And all of us do that. We're expecting her to f 
to to fill in that pain spot for you mm-hmm. you know it's not a void but it's pain spots you said i don't want to go there and really deal with with the actual pain that it's causing me so i want you to come and put a bandaid on it every single night because then i feel secure but to feel secure and and maybe in the energetic in the energetic world she came in just not to do that role yeah, yeah, so that yeah. you will have to deal with it yeah. at some point in time she so have to deal with it because if she did it because when you would I be said like to okay it's really good she was my greatest teacher mm. because of the pain that I yeah. faced because maybe you were running away from it and then she just came in to like you know throw some salt in there and yeah. paprika and say deal with it you know i'm i'm throwing it in your face you have so the to universe deal with brought it. that person in my life yep. for me to enhance the, the healing there and it got to the stage that where i just thought you know what okay don't say it it's okay don't say it. then that that is again going to the other side and saying don't say it. but it's okay to expect someone to you know to say good night and give you a kiss and and that's nice that's that's closing the day and saying mm-hmm. okay now let's go to sleep you know let's forget what's happened let's learn what went well bring all my thoughts up put on the table imaginary table and let's go to bed so that's a good expectation but in your case there's a story there's 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 An a pain attached this, yeah there's a pain attached because it's personal for mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. so you can still have the expectation but you're going to have to personally look at that Okay, so let me deal with that. You can all, you can always be disappointed that my partner doesn't close the day. Yeah. It's just disappointed. And, and maybe after a while, you think the partner is also going through a different journey, path. a different lesson where they're running away from something else by saying good night. Like uh, people in my 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 husband's side, they don't really say bye. And from my family, when we say bye, so we go and our kiss and yeah. we'll hug and we'll, my mother will cry and all that drama happens. And his family will look bye and they're like, yeah, bye. And I'm like, what? And I used to feel ignored, like, you don't care, I'm going. But then I realized that that's, that's part of their culture, that's part of their system, that they're not very fond of saying bye. They, they're more of, you know, saying hello types. So for a long time I would be very hurt and offended and I'm like crying and leave and like they didn't say boy to me and my husband like yeah that's normal for our family like you know so it everybody is on their own journey their own uh, conditioning their own stories that they may not really not do something because they don't want to do it even when they in you've told them that you know this matters to me it's just because they're wired differently and their focus is somewhere else and their energy is required to do something and probably not do other things to bring up that uh, that emotion for us oh, beautifully put it's so coming back to male and uh, male and female energy mm. so when again when Fulfillment. when we feel that completeness and i know it's not a word and i make up my own words but it's different because then when you look at a person you're not saying that okay fine you're going to fill up these pain spots for me and you're going to make me feel a better man and or a better woman or a taken care of woman or you're going to come and do this for me you're like i'm here i can take care of myself wow, emotionally they can probably feel it right yeah. they know that you self fed and self you full. can see yeah. that an um, aura your aura yes you can see that you can sense it the way they would express themselves for one another with one another the way they would interact and that the way makes they would you talk. more powerful right exactly. because you can't be hurt you're not vulnerable yeah. mm. because it's not that you can't be hurt you know that hurt keeps no, coming the energy you give out is that you're exactly. so you're not weak you you you're full your cup's full yep and then you're you happy f- with yourself you're happy with yourself even when you know things happen like a disagreement happens you're not dragged into it like you know if if i could give you an to visualize this you're not been tied to something and just being switched around you're you have your calmness and you're looking at it just as a topic of difference does it need practice lots of practice so if i'm if you my coach and that's a challenge with me what do i have to do with you do i hire you keep you for 5 6 weeks 6 sessions how does it work there are several ways if somebody is is doing just a coaching coaching we would work through limiting beliefs we go back to the source of everything clear that source 
put in, you know, um, test to say, okay, now let's go and try doing this. How do you feel? Let's pick up those uh, those topics that you've shelved for donkey's years that I don't want to talk about it because we get into an argument. Let's bring that out and let's practice having those conversations where you maintain your your balance and let the person maintain their balance. And if you can't, let's put in some energy to balance the space around you. Is that what makes you different? Yes, totally. I think because you work on the energy level, not yes, just the not just you know. Let's NLP talk about order, it. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of energy. There's, I, I get people back to, to what that emotion is. It's not about oh, tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel. I'll bring that feeling out from you, like you know, unravel it and say, okay, fine. Let's 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 go to it. Let's figure it out. Now let's sit with it. Now let's get rid of it. And now let's kind of not keep that open space for anything else to come. And let's decide what we want to fill back in here, and then fill that in. At what stage do you think people come to you, reach out to you? Um, or, or do you feel like they should come earlier? Or I think the, the time is always right. It's just when it's, it's meant to, it comes. Because, I don't know, I, I attract clients with the energy pull, you know? That do you know what I think? I don't think enough people come to me because I'm all about teaching people how to make money. But they just don't and they go down with the ship. I can't believe it. And I'm sick of trying to help because I don't appreciate it. So I just yeah. sit and wait for people to come to me. Is that a good thing? Been there, still there, because I want to help like millions and I don't yeah. know. But that's when I go back to my comfort, which is my flow and say, okay, fine. Um, I want to help. Here's my energy of help, of love, of you know, helping you in what I know. And I send that energy everywhere. So mm -hmm. the people who have to receive it will receive it. And, you know, th there's, there's a list of things that you can learn from the Internet, from people who are training business and all of it. And I get super overwhelmed with it because then the list is so long that I'm like, OK, now I need to stop what I'm doing and I have to start doing. And time and again, I fall flat on myself, flat on my face because I'm not doing what I'm good at, yes. <laughs> because I'm trying to learn something that has that has worked for someone. Yes. And then I go back again to saying, okay, fine, I know energy. So I will put in the energy of calm, peace, love, whatever is, and send that energy to whoever is ready to receive it and ready to accept it from me. So that energy goes like a little, uh, you know, message to a person who's ready and they're asking for the help. They will come. And when they find it, do they receive it? We connect. I mean, I've connected with people that I didn't even think was possible. You know, I was talking to you about the UN thing. Uh, when I did a session with um, Amity probably a month ago, in my profile I wrote that my goal is to present at the UN on this particular topic. And I don't know, three, four weeks after that, okay. randomly. So what's this position you have with the UN now? I don't say it till I get the, oh, okay. the appointment letter. Okay. <laughs> Not with the UN, it's with the company, maybe with the UN soon as well but uh, with the company that's registered with them, okay. which is solely looking at uh, mental health across the globe and things that we can do, apart from just you know raising awareness by doing push-ups. I don't know if you've heard of that new yes, uh, craze. And yeah. I'm like, hello, it's interesting, but yeah. awareness is not about knowing what the, the word exists. It's actually about getting stuff done, giving people tools and uh, techniques that they can use on their own without the help of you know a coach or a teacher or 10,000 equipment to say that okay fine I, I feel stress I feel I'm gonna fall onto the set I can do this and and get on with life if I'm watching and honestly you're amazing I'm yeah. not sure if you realize it yourself but you're amazing isn't she amazing and so people are watching right now and they go I want her what do they do how do they reach out to you? How? LinkedIn. Do you I mind handing LinkedIn. out your mobile number on the online? Is that okay with you? Yeah. What's your number? Zero five zero four six zero three eight zero five. Okay. And I just wrapped it up with energy that reaches the right people. Done. <laughs> and not just. So they anyone. contact you. They have a, a consultation or something. Is that what it is? Yep. So I do something called a discovery call, where we actually get on the call. We have a chat. I sense. Do you do Zoom now because of this? Yes. Uh, okay. So I sense the energy and see whether I'm really uh, equipped 
to or do I have a soul contract with them? You know, there are some people that you want to help and they want you, but that connection, that connection is just not there. So we gauge that on the first call, that whatever they're going through and whether I'm the right person for them, they're the right client for me. And then we move into a six months program, three week program, six weeks program, depending on what it is. Okay. And Amazing. it's fun. Amazing. How long have you been? An hour and 15 minutes. Always. <laughs> Amazing, right? Yeah. You're fabulous. You too. Thank you. Let's do this again. Yeah? Yeah. We've got I'd so love much to. to talk about. There's Kim. so Thank many you. things. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, you got the number. We'll send you the link. Connect with Kim. She is outstanding. I'll vouch for that. Thank you so much. See you again. See you again. Touch, touch. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.